I love zero. It's such a versatile number. Hey, how much money do you have? Zero dollars. Yo, same. Who's gonna pay for this food, though? I hate zeros. Why do we even have zeros? It's not like there's any numbers above nine anyways. Did you forget about ten? No. And there's even more numbers, like 134.5. Oh yeah, that reminds me. What, that you left the stove on? No! It's that I wanted a 100% of random game in my Steam library. Why, though? Does it look like I have anything better to do? Good point, after all, taxes are for nerds! Well, that can't be that bad, there's only like, what, five levels? Actually, it's more like five million. Well, Geometry Dash is great. If you look past all the whiny children and drama and sexual misconduct and thousands of forgettable levels and unhealthy amounts of harassment, you'll find a really good game. For a mobile game released in 2013 made by one man, it's aged really well. However, one aspect of the game that always seems to get overlooked is the sheer amount of stuff you can do beat and collect. I think most people forget that there are quests, daily chests, shops, and a lot of secret rooms that actually hint at the game having lore. Yes. Geometry Dash has lore. The game about squares jumping over triangles has lore. Hello, MatPat. Where's the fucking video on Geometry Dash lore? Now, attempting to 100% complete Geometry Dash is very complicated. Now, you might be thinking... What do you mean it's complicated? You just do everything! To which I say... You stupid! Before we get into the nitty gritty of it, I just want to backpedal for that one smooth brain in the audience right now. You know who you are. So, to 100% a game means to complete every single possible thing the game has to offer. 100% completing a game is usually a long and arduous task. You have games like Chris Pratt 64 and Banjo-Kazooie, where the difficulty comes from collecting all the shit the game throws at you. I need 1,263 stars that I don't know why! Then you have games like Uncharted and The Last of Us, which require you to beat the game on the hardest difficulty and also get all the collectibles, as well as completing some potential special modes. Finally, you have the games that most people think of as the hardest games to 100%, being big open world games like Grand Theft Auto V and Horizon Zero Dawn. These games require you to find all the collectibles, complete all the side missions, and beat them on the hardest difficulty. Which is more than a little bit, hmm, what's the word? Oh yeah, soul crushing! These types of games, however, aren't the hardest to 100%. Sure, it might take you 200 hours to 100% Breath of the Wild, but at least everything you have to do is in the game as soon as you buy it. The most difficult games to 100% are games that are constantly getting updated with new characters and cosmetics. Think Fortnite, Genshin Impact, Garden Warfare 2, games like that. However, there is an alternative method to all of the games I just mentioned. Money. Yep, you can use money to get more of the loot you need at a faster rate than just grinding the game. You know, the reason why I had no money at that restaurant earlier was because I spent it all on Garden Warfare 2. EA, you win. Just take my money and give me a disco chomper. That's all I ask. Just give me the fucking disco chomper. Now, GD isn't a game that's getting constantly updated, but around 10 new levels get raided every day and a bunch more are unrated five second levels that wind up in the recent dab, so GD may as well be getting constantly updated. It's something like Super Mario Maker, where there's so many new levels every day that it's essentially like the game getting constantly updated. Now, it is technically impossible to truly 100% complete Geometry Dash, because in order to do that, you'd have to beat every single level. 
This is actually impossible for two main reasons. First off, some levels are just straight up impossible, like original Silent Circles. These are levels that were hack verified and cannot be completed by a human being. Secondly, many levels are automatically deleted after a set period of time, especially if they have under 1000 objects. I've drawn up three different ways that can be considered 100%ing Geometry Dash, so let's start with the simplest one. So let's start off with the most tame approach, completing every achievement. This still isn't easy by any means, but it's definitely the most fair. Geometry Dash has a whopping 264 achievements, 266 on Steam, but most of them can be grouped into sets, where each set requires a certain collectible in increasing quantities. To start off with, you'd have to beat every main level a minimum of twice, once in practice mode, and once in normal mode. You'd also have to get all three coins on club step, toe 2, and deadlocked. This is very manageable, and also very fair. The two extra steam achievements are also related to this, being beat the first three levels and beat club step, so you'll unlock these if you're playing on the computer. Next, you'd have to beat 60 demon levels. While not super easy, especially for newcomers, this is also pretty fair in the grand scheme of things, as you can just beat 60 easy demons and be over and done with it. You'd also have to get 10,000 stars, which is a lot, but again, it's pretty fair as you can just grind out 4 and 5 star levels, which are usually never that bad. We start to run into a problem with the next set of achievements, being the Secret Coins achievements. You will need to collect 130 Secret Coins in order to get the full achievement set. Getting every Secret Coin on the main levels will only net you 63 coins. And while there are a few other Secret Coins in some of the Secret Lore Rooms I mentioned earlier, you will have to beat most of the map packs to obtain the rest. The map packs are infamous for having horrible levels in them, so this part of the journey isn't going to be fun. Still, it's manageable. After this are the silver user coins that can be found in user created levels. You'll need a beefy 1000 of these bad boys, which is definitely a lot. My recommendation is to obtain them from a lot of 5 to 4 star levels made by Adiel and other similar creators, since the coins there are usually very easy to nap, if not free. This, like the 10k star achievement, are ones that aren't particularly difficult, just very time consuming. The 45 map packs you'll need to complete to get all of their achievements honestly isn't that bad, since you'll need more to get 130 secret coins. It still won't be fun, but since this one goes hand in hand with the previously mentioned achievement set, it's not that bad. The 5000 diamond achievement is probably the easiest set of achievements in the entire game, since all you need to do is open the daily chests. You can also obtain them from beating gauntlet levels, weekly demons, and daily levels. <laughs> but why would you do that? You don't want to play Geometry Dash, do you? Anyways, you'll need to actually play the game for this next achievement set. Oh, fuck off! 1000 user created levels really isn't one to worry about since you'll almost certainly reach it before you get the 10k stars achievement. The 100,000 jumps and 20,000 attempts achievement sets are both ones that will probably be done way before you expect to. But for the 20k achievements in particular, you could just leave the game running on a random level for 2-3 to three hours to rack up a pretty nice amount of achievements. The miscellaneous achievements are all very easy as most are just clicking on some links to rob top social medias. But I hear you say. I don't want to make a Facebook account. I'm not 40. Well, you all need to click the links despite what the achievement description says. Simply visit all the links and the achievement will be done. As for the supporter achievement, you'll probably get it by fiddling around with the icon select screen. So close, which requires you to die at 95 or further on a main level, is also pretty easy to accomplish. The next two achievements can easily be obtained by just going through the recent tab religiously. I could dislike 2,000 online levels and rate the stars of 2,000 online unrated levels aren't very difficult, just time consuming. Following 10 people is so ridiculously easy that I don't get why there's two achievements for it, with one of them being following just one creator. Adding 10 friends is actually impossible since if you're attempting this, you won't have any friends. Sorry guys, video over. Destroying 500 players on the home menu screen is a great way to entertain yourself since every player you kill is a real life player who thinks they died to a lag spike. Geometry Dash is actually a perfectly optimized game, and lag spikes are a false conspiracy. Remember the time you died at 90 on your hardest demon because you thought it was a lag spike? 
Well, no, it was just some bratty eight-year-old furiously tapping at their milk-covered iPad. I bet you feel stupid. The Master Detective achievement is honestly a pretty well-hidden one. All you have to do is scroll through the main level, select three times to get the secret coin, but it's a cool thing that not a lot of people would ever think to do. Oh, damn it! I forgot to give a spoiler warning. I'm sorry, guys. Jump Street has his best experience going in blind. I'm really sorry if I ruined the game for you guys. It's just not the same when you know what happens. All the Vault, Vault of Secrets, and Chamber of Time achievements are pretty easy once you've unlocked them, as you just need to enter a bunch of codes. I'll leave a link down below to the checklist of codes you'll need to unlock everything inside of the vaults. The Shard achievements can be obtained by opening the Daily Chest, opening the Demon Chests, or by completing each one's respective gauntlet. The batting average for good levels is a lot higher in the gauntlets than in the map packs, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. You'll need 100 of each Shard to complete all of the achievements surrounding them. So, so far, it seems pretty doable. Sure, the 10k stars achievement and the 1k user coins achievement will take a lot of time, but it's still doable. This last achievement set, however, completely destroys any sense of doability. This last achievement set is enough to stop anyone from ever attempting this challenge. It is that difficult. Alright, so admittedly the first achievement is Piss easy. Simply place one block, verify it, and upload it to the service. Good job, Jimbo. You did something. Yeah, I did it. I hope you enjoyed this brief dopamine because it's about to be replaced with soul-crushing dread. What? The 50 and 100 likes achievements are really hard to get if you're not a relevant figure in the community. Like, really hard. And the worst part is these aren't the most difficult achievements to get. The single achievement that turns this from a doable but arduous task to a damn near impossible dream is Geometry Star. Now, what do you need to do for Geometry Star? Well, you need to get a star rated level. Now, that doesn't sound too bad in theory, but you have to remember that modern levels look like this and not this. Now, while it might not look that hard to make a level that looks like this, trust me, it's not. You have to know how to make competent gameplay and good looking decoration. The gameplay part isn't the main issue here. Anyone can slap together half decent gameplay that is easy as piss and as bland as a particularly ripe Pringle. I'm sure that One Two Trees gameplay wasn't made in more than 30 minutes. If it was, well, then Lyric is a very slow builder. No, the difficult part, the part that makes this achievement so impossibly hard to obtain, is the decoration aspect. The achievement was added back when you could just fall asleep on your mouse and bada bing bada boom you have a rate worthy level. Nowadays though, you need to know how to... Have a good understanding of what colors work well together, be able to competently use pulse, color, movement, and rotation triggers, understand how the group systems work, have a good background, have a detailed block design, but not too detailed because then it'll look ugly, be able to mesh your parts together but don't keep it too similar otherwise it'll get boring, but also don't make it super different because then it'll feel disjointed, understand what these things do, know what the editor shortcuts you can use, use these things, know which blocks to use and not use, make it stand out from other levels but don't make it stand out too far, hack the game if you need to go above the 80k object limit, be able to overcome the buggiest fuck editor. I get it! So in conclusion, achieving every single jump shot achievement is a stupid and arduous waste of time that is near impossible because of one singular achievement. And the best part is, this is the easiest form of completion. We still got two more of these things to go through. Oh boy! The second form of completion really isn't that much more compared to the first one. Essentially, you just have to beat all of the map packs and the gauntlets and unlock every icon. Now, technically, that second part is currently impossible since you need to import the icons from the spin-off games and that is a feature that will not be available until 2.2. Oh yeah, 2.2. In case you need a reminder of how bloody long it's taken. I was in the middle of 5th grade when 2.1 came out. I am now a sophomore in cop- Okay, I'm just joking. I'm only a sophomore in high school. 
You may never know, though. I may well be 20 by the time 2.2 comes out. It's impossible to tell. But it's okay, Rob Top. You take your time. You get it out eventually. Anyways, with what is currently possible in 2.1, getting all the icons and beating all the map packs and gauntlets is pretty simple. The map packs are bad. We've been over this a thousand times, but you will have to complete them. Suck it up! For this form of completion, you'll also max out your secret coin count to 149. You already got all the hidden ones from completing all the achievements, and the 19 you didn't get from completing the last form of completion are tied to the remaining map packs. Getting all the icons is pretty time consuming, but not overly difficult. First off, you'll need to buy all the icons and colors from the shop with mana orbs, which you get from making progress on two star levels and above, as well as from opening chests. No wonder so many Russian GD players are such twat heads. Look at this blatant display of capitalism. Once you've successfully supported the economy in all three shops, because remember, monopolies are illegal in Sweden, so you gotta spread the wealth, you'll have the gauntlets and the demon chests left to unlock. The gauntlets have a higher batting average when it comes to good levels, so it should be good there. The demon chests each require a certain number of keys to open, and they can be found randomly when completing or crashing on a rated level that's two stars or higher, or by opening the large daily chest. In total, you'll need a whopping 445 demon keys, 5 to unlock the room, 200 for the silver chest that require 1 key, and 240 for the 48 golden chest that require 5 keys to open. When you've opened enough of the chest, you'll have access to 3 extra chests that'll each reward you with an icon. It's important to note that the drops for these chests are randomized, so you'll often end up with mana orbs and elemental shards rather than icons. Because of this, it may seem frustrating, but fortunately, the prize pool remains constant and your chances of getting an icon will only go up the more chests you open. Additionally, you only need to unlock the silver chests to get access to the three bonus chests, as you'll only need to open 200 to unlock all three. This will definitely take some time to obtain all keys needed, but once you've done this, the hardest parts are done. You will need to free the key master from the basement, which is needed to unlock the demon gauntlet, as well as finish up all of the business in the several law rooms, but that isn't much. You'll need to beat the challenge, the secret bonus level no one has thought about since 2018, in order to access the basement, which I mentioned earlier, and doing so will unlock the chaos gauntlet, which you'll then need to beat in order to unlock the demon gauntlet, as well as opening 50 demon chests and inputting the correct code into the chamber of time. Oh, everything's coming together like a nicely lit blanket made of tears and blood. With all that done, you will have completed Jump Dash again. You probably spent a good 50 hours grinding for all these extra items, and I bet you feel pretty accomplished. Yeah, I do. Well, stop being happy. You haven't even started the real grind yet, you fuck. Aww. You see, there's still a massive pool of collectibles that we've yet to talk about. A massive pool that gets larger every day. Oh yeah. We're going there. In order to truly 100% Geometry Dash, you'd have to collect every single star, use a coin, and beat every single demon. You don't realize just how impossible that is. There are over 27,000 Rated levels spread across the various difficulties. And more are being added every day. Yeah, this is absolutely insane. I'm not gonna talk about this for much longer, but do not attempt this. Please. The other two forms of completion I mentioned are achievable, if very time-consuming, but this is utter insanity. You'll have to dedicate most of your life to grinding this out, and you'll still never be able to achieve it for more than a few hours, maybe a day at absolute most, before a new batch of 10 or so levels are added to what you need to obtain. So, what did we learn? Attempting to 100% Geometry Dutch is a fruitless endeavor that will lead you to a mental facility. Correct. Anyways, now I need to go vomit into my toilet because I think I just drove myself insane.